Jesus, the name given above, above every name. There's no other name given among, given to men, where it must, we must be saved. You know, I was, last night I was thinking so hard, you know, I was praying to God. Lord, what, what should I, what should I talk about? You know, I, I don't normally, <laughs> I don't normally preach. You know, the truth is I was, I was nervous. You know, I still am. I'm nervous. It shows humanity. It shows that, that as humans, we can't, we can't do it our, on our own. And that's, who I want to talk to you about today is, is Jesus. The title of my message is that I may know him. Apostle Paul, before he was an apostle, his name was Saul, a persecutor. Apostle Paul, to his letter to the Philippians, he said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, you know, that I may know him. Jesus, who is Jesus? Sometimes to shake up and strengthen my faith, I'll ask. Why am I trusting Jesus? This shakes up my faith because, because it makes me look honestly at whether I am trusting Him or not. Mm -hmm. It strengthens my faith because it reminds me of the overwhelming reasons I have to trust Him. Why do I trust Jesus? First of all, I want to say I, I believe there's a God. I believe there's a God. And I, I could as, um, I assume that Everyone here believes there is a God. Otherwise, if you don't believe there is a God, you wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. I believe there is a God. Some reasons I believe there is a God because, you know, if you look at the existence of, for example, the universe. Somehow, the universe has come into being. With millions of hundred thousand light years wide galaxies quantum particles we think about the universe how it's so complex how the universe is so complex that it screams for a designer not only is there a universe but it looks like it's been designed how the earth is being in the exact distance from the Sun so it's not too warm or cold. It can support life. It's so complex. You know, I'm wearing shoes right now, but these shoes were designed by an intelligent person. This was not thrown together all these materials, and then shoes came out. It requires an intelligent being, person, to design something. If this Simple if these shoes that I'm wearing right now came into being and it's not that complex how much more the universe Ima Imagine being in the exact Where earth is right now It can support life It screams for an intelligent being creator. I believe there is a God and I do believe that you believe that there is a God. Otherwise you wouldn't be here Amen I've never seen things like this arise by chance. You know that you're not just a blob of random chemical actions and reactions. You're a personal being who meaningfully chooses, communicates, loves, works, and feels. So here, so here we are in a universe with design and personhood. So what can explain this? To me, the best explanation is that an intelligent, personal, all-powerful God created everything. So it begs the question, can we know anything about this God, the God of the universe? Can we know anything about Him? And I'd like to point, point to you guys, Jesus. 
do we have any reason to think he has communicated with us? John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jump to verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, speaking about Jesus. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Can we know anything about this God? Let's talk about Jesus. Why should we believe Jesus? I'll give you guys a few reasons why we should. You know, I, I put, I'm, I'm not very good at putting outlines together, just to warn you guys, but I put these together last night. And I thought I'd put the historical evidence of Jesus. Historical evidence of Jesus. We have four eyewitnesses documents describing Jesus. Documents. Describing Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. One written by, the, by a tax collector, Matthew. One by a young man named Mark. One by a medical doctor, Luke. And one by a fisherman, John. Mm -hmm. These documents agree that God came to earth in the person of Jesus. That Jesus, the man, was fully God. We can see this in how Jesus lived with perfect integrity, matchless wisdom, passionate justice, and overflow, overflowing compassion. In our Bible study, we study the book of Mark, we study uh, John the Baptist, you know, presenting Jesus, the, the, the coming Messiah, and how we follow Jesus, as we read, we, we can see Jesus doing miracles for a reason. There's a reason why he was doing miracles is so that he can convince people that he has the authority he has the authority to forgive sins his ministry was to spread the gospel of the kingdom we can see this in how Jesus worked miracles only God can do healing a blind man's eyes in Mark chapter 10 verses 51 to 52 commanding a storm to stop in Mark chapter 4 verse 39 multiplying five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 and raising Lazarus from the dead John chapter 11 verses 43 to 44 see only God can do these things no, no man it's true that um, what Sister Annette was saying earlier, when we were having conversations about, you know, Jesus, one had mentioned to her that uh, God cannot, oh, what is it? Man cannot be God. True. But God can be man. I believe God can do anything. God is that powerful. God, if God can create the universe, so vast so big we're just we're nothing i believe god can do anything yes true man cannot be god mm -hmm. but god can be man mm -hmm. we can see this in how jesus said he would be crucified and then rise from the dead three days after three days later in mark chapter 8 verse 31 and just as he said he was crucified, John chapter 19, verse 8, three days later, the tomb was empty. John chapter 20, verse 2. And over 500 eyewitnesses saw him physically alive from the dead in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. So there's a massive historical evidence confirming that Jesus, the man, was also fully God. Amen. So I ask again, do you believe in God? I believe in God. 
Which would mean that in Jesus, we see what God is like. And we learn what God wants us to know. Apostle Paul's greatest desire was that he might know Christ. Not just know about him, but know him. He said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Verse 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. As Christians, why, why do we need to seek after Christ? Why do we need to get to know Him? Why should, why should we put our trust in Him? Who here believes that we're living in a world that is unsettled? The world right now that we live in, it's, it's uncertain. I mean, we could just turn on the news, look at what's going on in, in the election. I'm not here to talk politics, but you can just turn that on. And United States is not so united call it divided states. <laughs> United States having trouble with other nations. We're in the brink of war. We live in this world and it's unsettled. Now I ask again, why should we trust Jesus? You know, we all have troubles in life. You know, st storms will come in our way. Um, you know, we all go through different types of trouble in our life. You know, sometimes we even talk about it. Sometimes we talk about troubles and more than we talk about <laughs> blessings. You know, we talk about, oh, oh no, my trouble is bigger because this and that. The truth is, we're all going to go to go through troubles. But I'd like to point back to Christ. Okay. Number one point I want, I want to say, um, my first point is, the first point, is that He is the bread of life. John chapter 6, verse 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Here in America, we always go after material things. You know, we, we feel like if we can get, you know, a certain thing, then it'll satisfy us. If I can only just get that purse, if I can only just get that set of suits, then I'll be, I'll be good, I'll be satisfied. You know, we think about we think about we, we, we try to accomplish things because we think that that's what's gonna satisfy us. But the things of this world is only temporal. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches us to set our affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You know, when we die, which we are going to one day. It is appointed unto man once to die after this, the judgment. When we die, whatever things that we've accumulated in this life, we can't bring it to the afterlife. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Only Jesus can satisfy you. Only Jesus can satisfy you. Remember that 
story about the woman at the well. This what is this, a Samantha woman? Yeah. You know, you said something about if you drink my cup, you'll never thirst again. So he is the bread of life. He's, Jesus is the only one that could satisfy. Number two, he is the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Who here believes that we live in a darkened world? This world that we're living in, it's it's Satan's dominion. This place is cursed. This place is fallen. John chapter 9 verse 5 it says as long as I am I am in the world I am the light of the world the light provides guidance and direction light dissolves and removes the darkness we live in a darkened world as soon as you set foot when you wake up in the morning as soon as you, as soon as you set your feet on the ground you live in darkness but we are called to be light and salt if you have Jesus in your heart, you have the light. He is the light of the world. Who is Jesus? He is the good shepherd and the door of the sheep. John chapter 10 verse 7, Then, Je then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door, verse 9. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. See, the door opens to make an entrance possible and a shepherd protects and provides for the sheep he is the good shepherd and the door of the sheep Jesus is the bread of life Jesus is the light of the world Jesus is the good shepherd and the door of the sheep number four the resurrection and the life Jesus said unto her, John chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, let me read that. That didn't print quite right. John chapter 11, verse 25. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. The resurrection in life is that death has no victory, which is also provided by the Savior. We're all sinful beings, right? The Bible says, there's none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know that for the wages of sin is death. What's after that? But the gift of God is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. Ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. But Jesus is the resurrection and the life. The, resur the resurrection and life is that death has no victory. You know, Jesus conquered. Jesus won it all on the cross. So Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the good shepherd and the door of the sheep. We can find rest in him. The resurrection and the life. And Jesus, number five, the way, the truth, and the life. 
John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way. The world teaches us that there's many ways to get to God. We know, because of the Word of God, that Jesus is the only way. Even the Bible tells us that, um, Enter ye at the straight gate for, wide, gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go, go in thereat. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many world religions will teach you that it's through works. You have to be a good person. You have to, have to pray this much of this. You have to pay. But the Bible says there is no other way. It's only through Jesus. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. The bread of life, the light of the world, the good shepherd and the door of the sheep, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life. Why should we trust Jesus? In our Bible study, our main topic is, is Jesus. His mission. Why He came to earth to seek and to save the lost. And he said he came for the sinners, not for the righteous. Why should we trust Jesus? We should trust Jesus because if it weren't for Jesus, if it wasn't for him, there, there's no other way. If Jesus did not resurrect, was not raised from the dead the third day, then what we're doing right now is all in vain. But thank God he rose again the third day. Amen. Thank God he rose again the third day. Thank God that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. You know, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I said it earlier that people one day will find themselves in hell. They're going to wake up and they're going to be in hell and they're going to curse God and say, why am I here? Why did you send me here? The truth is, Jesus talked about hell more than he talked about heaven. He warned, he warned us about hell. People will say, oh, you're trying to scare people into heaven. The truth is, is the truth is scary. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not going to try and sweet talk you to heaven. I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth is if you die without Christ, you're, you're hell bound. You're, you're hell bound not because God sent you there. You're in hell. You're going to be in hell because you rejected Christ.
You see, He is the only way. Don't be deceived by, by the world telling you that you can make it to heaven, that you can be as gods. You can make it to heaven by doing good works. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus had to, had to come. He could have simply walked away. Really, he really could. He could have left the cross where it lays. But he didn't. You know why? Because he loved, he loved me. Because he loved you. Truth is, he didn't deserve it. But he left the splendor of heaven. Knowing what he was going to do. Christ came here to preach repentance and faith. We say we repent, right? We claim to be saved and to have repented of our sins. And I want to remind you again why Jesus had to die on the cross. is to pay for the penalty of our sins. The very reason why people, um, the very reason why people spat upon his face. He, he didn't have, he didn't deserve all that. God did not have to come down here and be a man, took on a, a form of a man. A form of a servant. He didn't have to. Yet he did. And why? Because he loved the world. He loved his creation so much. He loved you. So think twice when you're about to do something. Why don't you think about that? When you're about to sin, when you're about to lie, God, God hates sin. He hates sin. We're natural sinners, by the way. You can't go a day without sinning, I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that much. Jesus had to die. He's the only one. He's the only one that qualified. That qualifies. During during his earthly ministry, people questioned him. People questioned his authority. People wanted to kill him. And he knew that. He knew that he had to go through all that so he can have fellowship with us. And because of what he did on the cross, we are where we are right now, and it's only by the grace of God. If you, if you think you're going through hard times right now, go ahead and read the Bible. Go ahead and read the gospel if you think sometimes you feel like God has left you I challenge you to read the Bible and realize and understand what he did on the cross was for us thank God Jesus rose again the third day why should we trust Jesus because there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. We can be saved. It's only through Jesus Christ. It's only. It's only by grace through faith. I believe in Jesus. Historical, historically, you know, there's documents of him living here on earth. He's not a myth, guys prior to popular belief nowadays, but I, Jesus is the most influential man that ever lived on earth. Go around the world, he's talked about. Different religions talk about him. He's the most influential man that ever lived on earth. It's not just Baptists. It's not just, you know, Christians that talk about Christ. No. Everyone. Everyone talks about Christ.
Because Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord. When he comes back, all these world leaders that don't believe in God, they think they can be God? Every knee will bow. Even the ones that they didn't believe in him. You know, have you ever witnessed to someone and they go, I don't believe in God? You know? If, what kind of a God is a God who will send people to hell? And they, they even call him, that's, you know what I mean? They would call him names. You know, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. When he comes back. And that's what matters. It's not about the material stuff that we can accumulate in this life. Why should I believe in Jesus? Why should I trust Jesus? Because there's no other name. How was it this way? that I may know Him. So I challenge everyone that are here today, I know my outline is a little bit of everywhere, it's, but I'd like to point to Christ, the very reason why we're here right now. We call ourselves Christians, Christ followers, are we following Christ? Are we trusting Him? So if you're not 100% sure today, if you're not sure that if you die today, God forbid, I don't want anyone to die. God forbid, we're all going to die one day. Something can happen. I could be walking down there and get hit by, by something and I die. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, right now and you die you will wake up in hell let's pray to heavenly father lord thank you for the reminder lord i pray that your name has been glorified lord thank you lord for this short message and for Jesus Christ, Lord, dying on the cross for our sins, providing a way, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your amazing grace. Lord, bless, um, bless each and every one of us today, Lord. And continue to protect us and guide us. And Lord, we love you and we honor you. In Christ's most precious name we pray, amen.